So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and I welcome you to this series called RBI 24/7. So guys, as you know that in this series we discuss a set of five questions and through those questions we try to figure out some concepts which can be uh, which can be difficult for students to understand and they usually relate to the finance and economics field, right? So before we move to question number one, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel. So guys, if this is the first video of our channel that you are watching, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button and you can also press this bell icon which can help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up. You can also join our telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to resolve them as soon as possible, right? Okay, so here is question number one for today. Okay. So this question says, select the correct statement in relation to derivatives. So three statements given to you and you have to select the correct ones out of them. So guys, you can pause the video here, read the statements carefully and then we, you can decide that which option is going to be your answer. I hope the screen is perfectly visible. Moving ahead to the solution and the correct option for this question is option E. Option E means Statement 2 and 3, they are the correct statement whereas statement 1 is incorrect. So here we are talking about a concept called derivatives. So before we move further, guys, I would like to tell you that in this session, we are going to discuss some questions which are majorly based on the topic of derivatives. So you can take it as a revision session in which we are going to uh, revise our concepts and get thorough with them regarding derivatives. Right? <clears throat> okay. So derivatives, basically it is nothing but a contract. What? A contract. So in simple sense, when one person has an expectation that the price of a commodity, so uh, it necessary, it, <coughs> it need not be stocks or shares, it can be any commodity, it can be any physical asset or it can be any financial assets. Usually we talk about derivatives in terms of financial assets, but they can be physical assets also. If you remember, uh, we, we uh, talked about, we discussed in detail about the prices uh, of uh, fall in, uh, about the fall in prices of oil, right? So that was also its derivative contract. <coughs> so derivatives, it is nothing but a contract in which there is a buyer who wants to buy a certain commodity and there is a seller who wants to sell a certain commodity. Now the buyer is expecting that the price of the commodity that he is going to buy is going to go upwards and the seller is expecting that the price is going to go down, right? That is why the buyer wants to lock in current prices because he thinks that in future the prices are going to be high. Similar goes for seller, he thinks that prices are going to fall. That is why let me lock in the price which is which I am getting currently, right? So that is why they enter into a contract which is called a derivative. Buyer says that, okay, I am going to buy this certain commodity, let's say after three months at this certain price which we have decided, which we are deciding now. But I will buy this com commodity after three months. So he is expecting that the prices will rise and then he will buy the commodity at lower prices and then sell it at a higher price and then the buyer will make profit. But the seller is thinking that okay, let me uh, enter into a contract of sale now so that I get high prices now for my product and later, so later when I, uh, later when the prices will fall, I will buy the product, I will buy the same product at lesser prices and the difference is going to be my profit. So this is the basic concept of derivatives, right? It, it is a contract which is based on an underlying asset. See, there is no individual value of derivative, but it is deriving its value from the asset or the commodity which is being bought and sold here, right? So no individual value, but the value of derivatives depends upon the commodity that is 
being traded right so some more information about derivatives okay derive their value from the underlying asset do not have any value of their own allow sellers and buyers to enter into agreements so that they can lock in prices just as i told you in example and quantity so they want to lock in price and they are also talking about the quantity that okay i'm going to buy 500 kgs of this particular commodity or if uh, let's say if they are talking about oil they want to buy <clears throat> they want to buy 2 tons of oil at, at this particular price right so they also lock in the quantity that they want to trade so they help in increasing liquidity because provide a different way to buy the same commodities right so these derivatives they help in increasing the liquidity of the of a particular commodity because see someone who cannot buy now might want to buy in future so it is providing a different way to buy or sell right so basically it is leading to an entirely different contract so there can be two contracts one in which the buyer is buying currently at spot prices and seller is selling currently at spot prices and then there can be a contract in which buyer is saying okay i am going to uh, buy this quant let's do the contract now but i am going to buy it after 3 months and seller is going to sell after 3 months right so do you see that it leads to an entirely different contract although the let's say if the same commodity and the same quantity of the commodity uh, is being traded in both the cases but two different contracts so more number of contracts increasing the liquidity of the particular commodity because it provides a different way for buyers and sellers to trade right that is why they increase liquidity there can be so many agreements created on the same lot of shares thus help in creating trading increase in trading activity now going back to the statements you can see here 2 and 3 were correct whereas 1 was incorrect why is it incorrect because it says that derivatives have their individual value which is not correct we just discussed that their value depends upon the value of the underlying asset right there is no particular value of the derivative in itself moving ahead to the next question okay this is the second question for today and this question talks about two investors which type of investors are being talked about in the in the below mentioned statements right so two statements are given to you and they talk about different investors called harshit and harshita right now if we talk about the first investor this guy looks for the price differentiation in case of different assets so basically he tries to find out if there is an asset which is being bought and sold or which is being traded at different prices in two different markets so two different markets so has the habit of buying one type of security at one stock exchange and selling the same at another this way he pockets the difference in which and in second case uh, which talks about an investor called harshita she is fond of high risk trade opportunities and believes in earning high rewards by buying and selling at the correct time so basically you can see that she is a risk taker so you have to select the correct options that tell you about uh, the correct classification of these two investors moving ahead to the solution and the solution for this question is option c option c means number 1 that means harshit he is an arbitrator he is an arbitrator whereas harshita she is a speculator now let us try to understand these type of investors so that we can understand that why we are putting these two investors into these specific categories okay number first we are going to talk about hedgers so hedging means trying to protect your investment or trying to reduce your risk trying to mitigate your risk so it is a strategy which is which tries to offset losses in investment by taking an opposite position so let's say if there is an investor who is thinking that there is a commodity let's say there is a company called x limited and mr a mr a thinks that the shares of x limited are going to 
the price of shares of this particular company are going to rise but see he has a doubt in his mind because he's an investor he just expects it to rise there is no certainty of it that is why if he decides to buy this shares he tries to take an opposite position at the same time so that in case he faces some loss here he can get some profit in the another deal right obviously this type of strategy reduces the profit that this investor can make because he is taking an opposite position which might uh, in, which might uh, lead to some cost for him right so it reduces the profits but that provides some sort of certainty in the situ in the case if the expectations goes wrong in, in the in the case the expectations go wrong but if the expectations go right then he is he is going to make a profit here so that is hedging taking an opposite position to pr to protect your current investment from going into losses so reduction in risk provided by hedging also typically results into reduction in potential profits right so number first classification of investors hedges hedges are risk averse investors who do not type, like to take any sort of risk now coming to another set of investors known as speculators they are high risk investors they uh, they are risk loving investors you can say they are fond of risks and they believe in earning high rewards so one reason behind this can be the adrenal rush adrenal rush that these investors get from taking high high risk decisions now coming to the third category that is known as arbitrages arbitrages refers to investors who look for different prices in different markets buy in the market where the price is low and sell in the market where the price is high and the difference is going to be their uh, difference is going to be their own profit so they look for discrepancy in the price of same asset in different markets right so that is why the first investor is an arbitrager and the second investor is a speculator right i hope this question is simple enough moving ahead to next question okay this is your third question for today which says which type of risks do the following statements talk about so two statements given to you that's risk is also called market risk and it cannot be diversified because it affects the entire market so two statements describe a certain type of risk you have to tell which type is it moving ahead to the solution and the correct option for this question is option b option b means systematic risk so systematic is the uh, risk is the risk that impacts the entire market right so it impacts the entire market and that is why it cannot be diversified because everyone is going to be impacted by this certain sort of risk and it is going to have an impact on almost all the organizations that are playing in the market right so which which impacts systematic means which impacts the entire system right okay systematic risk inherent to the market as a whole reflecting the impact of economic and geopolitical and financial factors right also known as undiversifiable risk so for example if we take into factors uh, let's say there is a war in a country so if a war happens then no business is protected from it no matter how stable a business is they are going to be impacted by it right so this sort of risk refers to systematic risk or volatility or market risk as it impacts the entire market not just a particular stock or a particular industry whereas if there is some particular if there is if there are some factors which relate to a certain sector of industry let's say when corona virus began the uh, the outbreak of corona began um, it was difficult to get raw materials from china for pharmaceutical sector which were known as apis which impacted the pharma sector 
right so this this particular factor is not having any impact on steel industry or it, it is not having any impact on the textile industry but only on the pharma industry so this is not a systematic factor or systematic risk right whereas something like war which can impact the entire industry at uh, in totality it is going to be known as systematic risk both unpredictable and impossible to completely avoid no business can be uh, protected from it cannot be mitigated but only diversification can hedge it or correct asset allocation strategy now if you invest into such assets which provide you with some profit then you can just hedge it you cannot mitigate it you there is going to be certain impact you cannot uh, protect yourself completely from it no business can do that but they can just try to reduce the impact of it right so uh, for example uh, if we talk about this pandemic only uh, when corona virus began or the outbreak began many industries they shift many uh, industries they shifted to digital nature of work or they provided work from home facilities to their employees they trained them because they anticipated that okay this is going to be the problem and we cannot continue uh, we cannot continue calling our employees to the office that is why we'll have to work from home so those businesses which were able to train their employees to cope with such situations they mitigated their losses right so cannot be completely avoided but only you can take certain steps to reduce its impact different from systemic risk systematic risk is different from systemic risk so guys here is one task for you you have to find out the difference between systematic and systemic risk and mention it in the comments so i hope to get a lot of comments okay next point it says that if you want to know how much systematic risk a particular security will hold you can look at its beta so in finance we use beta as a measure to find out the systematic risk of a security so systematic risk basically means that if market is being impacted by this one particular factor then what is going to be the impact on let's say the comp the shares of x limited company or the shares of y limited company that means the impact on one security in relation to the impact on entire market that is known as beta that so if beta is greater than 1 that means the stock or the investment avenue you are looking at is riskier because it is being it is more vulnerable to that risk as compared to the entire market whereas if beta is less than 1 that means so if beta is less than 1 it means that the the investment avenue that you are looking at is less vulnerable than the market that means the loss which is going to happen to market is more than what will happen to this particular security right so beta is a measure of systematic risk opposite of systematic risk unsystematic affects a specific group of securities or an individual security as i told you about the pharma sector right it can be mitigated through diversification so if a, there is an investor who had invested entirely in the pharma sector then he faced losses because of uh, because of lack of availability of apis but if there is an investor who has diversified the investment some into pharma some into auto some into uh, uh, energy so different different sectors then he might not face this much of loss so that is why diversification helps to reduce unsystematic risk right okay moving ahead to the next question so question number 4 and okay it's a case study it's it goes like amar and prem are two friends who want to buy eggs after two months now they have heard about a person called mr bajaj who owns a poultry farm and supplies eggs and bread so he is popularly he is popularly known as bread ka badsha and omelet ka raja so there is a certain kind of person who is a uh, very good who is very popular for providing certain commodities now amar and prem they expect egg prices to go up in future and mr bajaj expects the opposite so that is why the friends enter into a contract with mr bajaj to supply 500 eggs 
to each one of their, them after two months at a predetermined price of rupees ten per egg. Later, Prem amends his contract and asks Mr. Bajaj to provide him with a choice whether or not to buy eggs after two months or not. After two months. Just a second. For this, he offers 200 rupees extra to Mr. Bajaj. So, which examples are being cited by the above cases? So, uh, a particular case study has been given to you and you have to identify the correct option out of these five options. Moving ahead to the solution of this question and the correct option for this question is option D. Now, option D means Amar has is uh, Amar is citing an example of a forward contract whereas the contract by Prem it is an example of an options contract. So guys if you remember the session in which we discussed about derivatives in detail. So there was a session in which we have discussed elaborately about derivatives, its types and how do they differ from each other. We discussed about forwards, futures and options contract. Right, so we are going to be, we are uh, going to discuss them briefly. Okay, now we we had talked about derivatives. Derivatives majorly can be categorized into three parts, although some uh, complex other forms are also available. But we are here going to talk about three parts: derivatives, which are called forwards, futures and options so guys i just told you in question number one that derivative is an agreement that helps a uh, buyer and seller to trade at a point in future but at predetermined prices and predetermined quantity now this certain contract is known as a forward contract right that simple example that we discussed in derivatives question now if this particular contract it is standardized in nature or it is being traded at a stock exchange under the uh, under the rules and uh, regulations of that particular stock exchange then it is going to be known as futures so the basic difference between forwards and futures is that futures are uh, futures are not customizable but they are uh, uh, they are common in nature or you can say they are uniform in nature and they are tradable on a stock exchange whereas forwards can be customized and futures are standardized. So the main difference is of, uh, if, is of the ability of being customizable in case of forwards whereas the contracts are standard standardized in case of futures. Now options, options are a little bit different. It provides obligation to one party but it provides right to the another party see in this case the example that we discussed under derivatives no party can refuse to buy or sell after a particular date because they are bound to do so because because of this particular agreement right they cannot run away from the contract they cannot deny it but options provide an option to one party a choice to one party and so that party has an option whether to fulfill the contract or not whereas the other party they will have to fulfill the contract if the party having the option decides to uh, decides to validate it right so you can that is why uh, in this example you can see that prem he later amended the contract he to, he might have told mr bajaj that i am not sure that uh, even that whether I would like to buy this much of eggs at future or not. So that is why I want an option. If it, if I would think that it is not beneficial for me to buy this much of eggs, then I will not buy it. But for that, he had to pay some extra money to Mr. Bajaj unless why would he provide the option to Prem, right? So this is sort of extra money or premium that is being paid to Mr. Bajaj in order to avail such option, right? So in forwards and futures both the parties the buyer and the seller both the parties have obligations that they have to fulfill at any cost but in options one party has the right and one party has the obligation 
so the party having the right has to pay some premium to avail this right and if if the party having the option decides to exercise then the other party will uh, would have to fulfill the contract irrespective of anything right so that is about that is a brief description of forwards futures and contracts so guys if you want to uh, if if you wish to learn about derivatives in detail you can watch that session that session was uh, rbi 247 day 17 uh, you can watch question number 1 in this session in which we discussed about derivatives and uh, through with the help of examples in detail right so if if these concepts are new to you then you can watch that session for more detail okay moving ahead here you can see i think most of the things mentioned here we have discussed that in the example right so financial derivative depends upon underlying assets depends upon underlying assets like stock bonds and currencies forward they are customizable in nature futures they are standardized in nature and they are traded on an exchange whereas the options contract gives the buyer the right to buy or sell a particular asset at a future date right so that is uh, gives one uh, i think this is there is some problem with this slide but uh, whatever is written here we have discussed it through the help of examples so no problem with this moving ahead to the last question for today okay this is the last question this question says dash options offer a middle ground between american and european options so this question talks about different type of options moving ahead to the solution and the correct option for this question is option a option a means bermudan options see guys i told you that in options one party has the right one party has the uh, obligation so one party can decide whether we want to move ahead with this contract or not the party having the right so in american and european options the basic difference is only of the time <coughs> here you can see under american options allows the traders to exercise their right to buy or sell at any time before the options expir expiration date so let's say there is a contract there is an options contract that expires after 3 months so if it is an american option then uh, the person having the right can exercise the contract at any time during the period of these 3 months but if it is an if it is a european option not american option then the contract would have to be exercised only at the end of these 3 months right so under american options the trader has the flexibility to exercise at any point of time during these during the 3 months during the duration of the contract whereas under european options only a trade trading can only happen at the end of the contract or when the contract expires right then comes bermudan options they provide a middle ground because they allow trader to exercise the right on any of specified dates before the x option expires so it might be possible that the contract gives the gives the right to the trader to exercise the contract let's say after expiration of one month right and then after expiration of second month so if he doesn't use the right after one month has passed away then he cannot use it for the another month and then you can you he can use it at the end of second month and if he doesn't uses it now also then he can use it only after third month right so some specified dates are some dates are specified that if the trader wants they can use the they can exercise the option on that particular date so that is why it is a mix of american and european options provide a middle ground between these two right So guys these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video and if you did do not forget to hit the like button because i will be back in next session with some new set of information till then you guys take care of yourself keep your studies going on keep watching and i will see you in the next session thank you for being here